So proxy chains essentially is, as the name will tell you, a chain of proxy that we can set up. We have our configuration over here in Etsy proxy chains. And so far we're telling them to use this list of proxies. So we could add like five different proxies in here, but for now we have a SOX4 proxy on our local host machine and we are listening on port 1338. So what we did is a SSH tunnel on the port 1338 to this machine. So now every request we send via proxy chains will go to this port and this port will send it to this machine. So our requests look like they come from our hacked machine. Now we hacked this the last time, so maybe you didn't get that, but for some reason it doesn't uh, seem to work. Maybe we have to do something else. We have strict chain. We are gonna use a dynamic chain, or maybe now it works. So in here you can see, for example, our dynamic chain is we access this port, which is our proxy, to get to this website. And it doesn't seem to work because here something is broken. Maybe we can uh, like very verbose. And now we can maybe find out why it fails. So we go to proxy. Now it works. Okay. So what we did with this proxy chains curl is tell curl to use proxy chains. So our proxy we configured to go to this one. Now. We can do this much. Uh, we can use this proxy chains for everything. For example. We can use it for Firefox and now everything we do in Firefox will use the proxies we configured in proxy chains. So if we now get this IP and we paste it in here, we should in theory get the website like we did just like 10 minutes ago. So we see here what's happening and it seems like nothing is happening and I'm not sure why. Sometimes the proxy like just dies on me. So let's go with this one again and now we try to reload. This doesn't seem to work. Okay. But if we try that again, we should get like a proxied connection. I mean, you can see here that we kind of had it working. So maybe we need to go via this route. Maybe I have to save it like this and then we can do proxy by patterns. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Now this looks like it's working for us. And the DNS config is not working, but since the other one is just called config without a minus, we are just going to remove the minus and it doesn't work. Okay. Fantastic. Now we have this website that works and here you can modify your open VPN file and execute it. Update file, test VPN, executed successfully. Okay. So the file is completely empty and I don't know why it said it's working, but I think we may be able to insert like some kind of commands into it. Not sure. Hopefully we're going to find out soon and hopefully my dear chat can be as helpful as you were last time. So I'm open for any kind of ideas. Now that we actually got some kind of connection to this website, how can we hack it? Now the simplest thing would be to test like for the classic injections, like HTML injection, just a simple plain HTML injection. Oh, come on. I can't even do HTML anymore. And we update the file and now we test it and okay. Uh, it worked. I don't know why I have no idea what this update file does. And I'm unsure what's happening overall, but we got access to this server and unlike while the chat gathers some genius ideas that we can use to hack into this server, I'd like to go on a bit of a tangent. The machine name is vault.htb. I don't know if you can play it without a premium account, but if you want to get a premium account, I, I highly recommend it and you can do it via my affiliate link and you can find that in the description and and then you can do the challenge together with me in the live stream, which is also a very fun way to solve this challenge, seeing me like fail all the time. But first of all, I just remembered that's why we're going on a little tangent. Last time we were kind of able to like just log into a website because we changed the host name to localhost. So the request looked like it came from localhost and I'm unsure why. So the page in question is admin. So let's take a look at 
admin. So this one looks pretty simple. It just does a quick check if the domain is localhost. So that's why it was able for us to enter in last time. It looks like it just checks if we have the domain localhost or if we have like the name Dave and then it does something. Unsure what it does, but for now we'll just skip this part. The important part was first it checks if we have the host name set to localhost and second it doesn't even check the credentials if, if we're honest here. You can't even see any kind of credential check, right? Or am I just stupid? I don't hope that I'm stupid. Uh, but that was our quick little tangent. I hope whoever commented this is happy that we now just showed this. But I actually still want to try to find out why this page doesn't work. No, we have a URL not found. Now we could do some fuzzing in the background, but I have a feeling that if we fuzz too hard, we are gonna break this website. But I mean, you never know if you never try, right? So we're starting some fuzzing in the background. For that, I'd like to have a new window so we can just like uh, restart the proxy once we crashed it. We might have to do this via proxy chains, first of all. What do we have? Yeah, I I'm, I may, maybe I'll switch to the phone box in the future because uh, I'm having some troubles with the ARM architecture of the whole Mac ecosystem. But here we are at the word list. Then we have, sec ah, come on, sec lists. And in here we have discovery and we have web content and let's go with common so common or maybe we go with directory list medium because and then we go to our url which will be b our ip is 192.168.1.1 one to two dot four slash our and i think that's enough for now right so for now what we're doing here is basically for the people that don't know what fuzzing is it's like a nicer word for brute forcing we have this word list with a couple of common names that are used for directories etc and it tell the and this program essentially goes through this list and checks if we have something called uh whatever, for example, maybe the name here is admin. So one entry in this list is admin and it checks does admin.php exist and so on. We can also enable recursion with a recursion depth of one for now and start it. And something that URL must end with the first keyword. Okay, so we can also just say we want the extension PHP or PHP and now we'll try both with and without the extension. I didn't want to do that. Maybe there's an option to do so. Maybe the chat knows. We'll just start this. Okay, so this fussing thing is going to take forever. It doesn't seem to have anything working out right now. Maybe we're going to break our uh, server. But our proxy server. But the question is, why the heck doesn't this URL work? So we have here, click here to modify your DNS settings. And once I want to access it, it's like not found. Has that something to do with the VPN config? The other thing that I don't get is we have some kind of VPN config here. All right, perfect. Then let's input some HTML and test the VPN and it executes successfully. Okay, now if we do the same thing and save this first or update the file it works as well now what i think is maybe just maybe we have to find some way to create something malicious inside an open vpn configuration since i have no idea how to do that we have our friend google that's gonna tell us exactly how we're gonna do that ah uh, the internet sorry i have to go on a tangent here but the internet in 2024 is just a pain in the ass. I just want to read up on a topic. And first I have to say, no, I don't want to log in with Google. And then I have to like get rid of this thing. And now I can read something. Okay, so I hope this one is gonna deliver us the answer that we're looking for. All right, are you telling me you can just easily spawn a a VPN, okay. uh, a VPN, a reverse shell. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We have the up and now we have to replace all the quotes because for some fucking reason, medium posts can't 
do quotes for shit. Okay, we uh, now essentially what we're trying to do is attach a get a reverse shell to this other server, right? We have netcat installed. So what we can do is ref shells. We can use this command. But first, we are on a hacked server already. That's why it's called Dave at Ubuntu. Our IP is, I think we're going to go with with the one that's in the same subnet, right? Or maybe we'll just go with this one. We'll try both. But first, we're just going to listen to port for 2069. So we're listening on every device. So we're going to catch uh, this IP, go to this VPN config thing, paste our new IP here, and then do a 42069 in here and update the file. It seems to work. Test the VPN, execute it successfully. And did we get the shell here? That would have been too easy. So we need to find another way to do so. I'm thinking about what we could try. So essentially, I don't have an IP, right? Or I don't have the IP in the same subnet as the server. Maybe it's also just this reverse shell thing that doesn't work. But maybe we can try another command. Or maybe we have to set up a VPN to connect to our other machine first and then do the reverse shell. We will find out. So let's go with this up first of all, right? Because we are not never going to give you up, never going to let you down. Okay, so let's go back to Dave. David, what's your IP? Is this your IP? I mean, am I stupid? I can just resolve it quite easily with world HTB since this is the load.htb server. We're just gonna take this IP because to be honest, I it's the only one I see here. Maybe we should try this one instead since that is in the same subnet. It, it would make more sense. And then we just try this one. We update and... Oh, did I do the 42069? Yes. And now we test the VPN and it said executed, but, but it took a bit longer. So this is maybe a good hint. No, it's not. Maybe we'll just go back to this one since this looks like a good way to do it, but we maybe just had the wrong IP. Now the quotes are garbage as always. Here we have the port for 2069 and the IP would be this one. Maybe that's gonna work. Or maybe I'm too stupid to read what's happening here. So let's copy this one. First of all, update the file, test the VPN and see if we got the shell. Okay, no. Do we have something in here? No. So let's take a look at open VPN config reverse shell. I mean, maybe we need all the other pretexts to like look like a legit thing before we do it. And maybe the quotes are correct in the wrong way after all. I'm just as confused as you are, to be honest. Maybe you're not confused. And we update the file and we test the VPN and something happened and it took a bit longer and it still doesn't seem to work. So we can't, for the love of God, get some reverse shell. Now we're just gonna try this one with the correct things here. Uh, quotes. Why do blocks not have the correct quotes anymore? What's happening? And for the IP, this time we're just gonna resort back to the default. To this one. And now... Uh, you maybe can't read what I'm doing, but here I'm essentially trying to set up a reverse shell, right? Maybe we just uh, do the config like so. Just uh, and a quick for your information, I have zero idea how OpenVPN configs are supposed to be written. I'm just trying out different kinds of things and it uh, kind of hangs. So we didn't get any shell. Maybe the problem is that we don't get a reverse shell this time, but we should do a bind shell.